This review for Call of Duty Black Ops 6 will cover exclusively the multiplayer and zombies mode. If you'd like to hear my thoughts on the campaign, you can check out the video in the description. So, with Call of Duty Black Ops 6 being out for a little over a week now, I decided I should give my opinion on the multiplayer and zombies. At first I wasn't going to because I've sort of fallen out of Call of Duty. Back in the 360 generation, I was actually a pretty skilled Call of Duty player. Uh, in Modern Warfare 2 specifically, I used to dominate the leaderboards. I would have many kill streaks ending in nukes, and you know, it was just a thing I did with my friends, like most people do in their 20s. So over the years, it sort of fell out as Call of Duty doesn't really innovate too much. You can't knock the series for its general quality, but in terms of freshness or bringing new ideas to the table, Call of Duty has mostly become a stagnant franchise. And with Black Ops 6 specifically, as I stated in my campaign review, the reason I played the game is because I had seen a ton of positive feedback from both people within the industry and just general audiences on social media that this was the reinvention of Call of Duty. Like, this is it. We're back, boys. And as far as the campaign goes, I don't agree with that sentiment. I think it's fine. It's obviously competently made, and Raven Software definitely deserve flowers for how well they were able to string together so many disparate elements. But where Black Ops 6 really shines is within its multiplayer and zombies component. Now, I'm going to break this up into two segments so that I'm not overlapping a lot of ideas and whatnot, although some of the core elements of both of these modes go together. But regardless, we're going to break it down to multiplayer and then zombies. Let's get into it. So when it comes to multiplayer, Black Ops 6 isn't necessarily a gigantic shakeup to the foundation of Call of Duty. First off, I gotta say, whoever the heck invented this friggin' Call of Duty launcher, he needs a flogging. <laughs> On PC especially, it's really annoying to launch a separate app, and while I understand that the Black Ops 6 multiplayer experience is contained within that, if you're shifting between the different games or going to the campaign, it then requires another launch, and it's just very sluggish to load for whatever reason. I have an SSD that the game's installed on, and you would think it'd be zipping by. But anyway, that has nothing to do with the multiplayer. The core experience of multiplayer here has the general makeup that Call of Duty always has. There's the typical skill-based matchmaking. There's lobbies that you can invite your friends into, and then auto-populate with whoever's playing online. I do love the crossplay aspect, but that has been a feature of Call of Duty since the Modern Warfare reboot five years ago now. And I also like that there's keyboard and mouse and controller support on every platform. Everyone's got a level playing field if they want. Where Black Ops 6 excels specifically is with regard to its movement. So as I briefly mentioned in my campaign review, Black Ops 6 introduces something called Omni Movement. An Omni Movement essentially lets you sprint in whatever direction you want, be it forward, backward, left, right, diagonal, and you can do ridiculous things like slide backwards or do a dive to the left. You can even do a dive forward and then spin around like a 360. And sh well, you wouldn't 360 because I'd be looking forward again. But I suppose if you wanted to, you could. And that type of movement is something that I've missed since the rise of military shooters. Back in the early 2000s when the whole craze was new, you know, and Medal of Honor Allied Assault put a bigger focus on scripted set pieces and whatnot. You know, it was a fun change of pace from typical boomer shooters, but over time you just get annoyed when your character moves so slow. And while Black Ops 6 doesn't have a general walking speed that's particularly spiffy, with this Omni movement, it's really great to just zip around the map in whatever direction you want. I mean, sprinting sideways and backwards doesn't make any sense, but that's where it becomes fun. This Call of Duty is the first one in a very long time to feel more video gamey. The original Call of Duty, since it was built off the Quake 3 engine, inherits some of the qualities of that game, but over time, Call of Duty's just become more and more realistic, and to me, it's just gotten worse. 
So now we get to Black Ops 6 and suddenly I can max pain dive out a window and shoot someone in midair. You know, at first when I saw the loading screen with that person doing like Guns Akimbo or something, I was like, you can't do that in the game, what the hell? But then I played the multiplayer tutorial, I was like, holy shit, you can do that. <laughs> now, I don't think it's necessarily practical. And as I said to my friend at one point, I do believe it's maybe a little too complicated to pull off on the fly. But I suppose it's one of those things where it raises the skill ceiling and allows for player expression. I'm sure as we watch Call of Duty professionals, we'll see them pulling off ridiculous maneuvers. And I mean, it's just really fun overall. So I can't fault the game for that. Now in terms of the rest of the mechanics, I mean the guns feel pretty good. I don't know if this is maybe the best Call of Duty in terms of that. You can't knock the customization of your guns. That's still extreme as ever. Uh, I mean the camo unlocks by doing things in game instead of buying stuff. I mean the general challenges like from Call of Duty 4 and Modern Warfare 2 are kind of gone. So that stinks a little, but with the way the game feels just to play in general, I think it overcomes a lot of those lacking elements. The only thing the multiplayer can't really rise above is the level selection. Now, I know, again, with the Modern Warfare reboot, Activision did away with paid DLC for maps and whatnot. The season pass, as I mentioned, is just like a battle pass thing. And in this game, I think it's called the Vault Edition. You get extra skins, whatever, who cares? So over time, this game will probably have better maps and you won't have to pay for them as we saw with the addition of Nuketown this weekend. So, I mean, take this with however much salt you want. I don't think the level design in Black Ops 6 is very good. A lot of the maps are super small and I know they're supposed to be 6v6, but it just, it feels overly clustered. And it's bringing me back to why I didn't like the original Black Ops' multiplayer. The spawn points are just very congested, for a lack of a better description. A lot of times you'll spawn and there's an enemy just right on top of you, so they kill you immediately. And while there is a sort of grace period when you spawn, it still just sucks. You don't even get your bearings after a death and you're already in the thick of combat. I suppose some people might like that as it keeps the action going, but I think in general, these maps just, they feel like recycled ideas. There is one, it's called Skyline, the map. I actually thought it was from Black Ops 4, which featured you going through these luxury apartments and you could like climb on the roofs and jump out windows and stuff. But no, it's actually a brand new map and it just, Again, it's overly claustrophobic. There's another one that I've played Infected Mode on, which I do think is a great mode, but it takes place in rundown shopping stores. There's a lot of fire and whatnot going on, and I don't know, it just... The stores don't allow for the Omni movement to really shine, and when you go outside, it's just so open that it might as well not even be a level. It kind of feels like they should have done it maybe as a strip mall with more barriers or objects outside to hide behind. As it stands, it's just, it really feels kind of random. The levels aren't terrible by any means, but this is probably the weakest selection of maps to launch with a mainstream Call of Duty, probably since Black Ops 4, which also didn't really have the best selection of maps. Nuketown does bring it up a bit, and this Nuketown in particular is based off the very original one from Black Ops. So I like the 60s aesthetic. That design, while also being small, at least has rooms that feel laid out to deal with the movement better. And Omni Movement makes stuff like that one window overlooking the lattice really cool, because then you could just dive out it and start killing people. <laughs> you could even go on the lattice and then dive over to the truck. So. There, I could see why there is a positive reception to Black Ops 6 from playing the multiplayer. I, as I mentioned too, Infected Mode is great. I think this was in possibly Modern Warfare 3 or one of the more recent games. But it sort of works like a similar mode in Halo where one person starts out as the quote-unquote infected and then they do kill all the other players. So the round is won either by the non-infected players surviving 
or the infected ones taking over. It's a cool mode specifically because it allows for 24 players. Most of Black Ops 6 is just a 12 player affair and I'm not really sure why something like Mosh Pit only has 6 players even, or 12 sorry. But, but again, with the way Call of Duty is now, I'm sure most of this will change over time and there will be bigger maps and more variety. It's just, I'm talking about what I've played now and for now I am actually surprised to say that I think the multiplayer is pretty good. But the true star of the show is Zombies. So let's get into that. Now, as seems to be tradition with every Treyarch Call of Duty game, the Zombies mode just steals the show. I don't really know when Zombies became such a cultural phenomenon within Call of Duty itself, but the main reason that I like it so much is that it drops the pretense of being this serious military shooter and shows off Call of Duty for the video game it is. This is a mode where these weirdly jingoistic military guys are shooting the literal undead, and you know, it's that weird mashup, the incongruous elements that combine to make the zany friggin... I mean, it's, it's great. The original Zombies mode from Call of Duty World at War was super basic. You repaired windows and just held out in a relatively small map. As that game got DLC, it started to progress more and more so that the levels were bigger. And it wasn't until maybe like Black Ops 2 where they started to really introduce their own story mode within the Zombies game. And at this point, Zombies might as well be a different game. I played a lot of it with my friend on launch weekend, and we played a bit of Black Ops 4 to capture footage for the Destructoid video review, and we were very taken with Zombies mode in that. It had these really in-depth levels with bizarrely obscure <laughs> directions to solve them, and Black Ops 6 carries that on. But where I think this particular version of Zombies elevates itself over the others in recent memory is that it goes back to that old round-based style. So there's two maps in Zombies at launch, as is tradition. They are Liberty Falls and Terminus. They both have a different central gimmick, where Liberty Falls is more like the original World at War Zombies mode, where you just unlock doors and keep going. And... Terminus has you restarting cores to then bring the power back and then all kinds of other nonsense with resurrecting the dead. I haven't really dug into that particular map in general, but if you don't really care about any of that, the mode works in a way to just let you shoot. These maps have lots of different choke points. They have very vertical design. They emphasize the movement of the game very, very well. And the general roster of zombies that you're fighting is mixed up enough here that it never feels truly stagnant. One of the problems with World at War Zombies mode is that, I mean, you'd get overrun eventually, but you were really only ever facing a general zombie. It was just a Nazi zombie. But now you have things like a um, Mangler who has this gigantic pulse cannon that shoots out. You have, uh, I think they're called I'm not going to remember it now, but it's a flying insect thing, and those are annoying as hell. They <laughs> get you from long range with their little balls of acid. You also have spider dudes. It's... Ugh, I don't even know how Activision gets away with including this in Call of Duty. It feels almost too generous, and I know I'm gassing up this game so much right now after crapping on the campaign, but really, Zombies is just... It is the highlight here, and... I honestly wouldn't feel bad saying play the game specifically for this. Where I do think it falters a little is that the steps to solving the story are very complicated and in-depth, and I know that's sort of the charm that fans of Zombies Mode enjoy, but I have to mention that Treyarch is going to introduce what they call Directed Mode in the future, and that will then highlight all of the objectives you need to do to solve each map. So for now, this is mainly providing the Zombies experience that longtime fans want, and I can't knock it for that. 
if there's anything else, it would just be that I wish these games would launch with more than two maps. I know the maps will be free in updates, but there's past Zombies maps that are really good. I love that one from the original Black Ops where you're playing as JFK and Castro and Robert McNamara and Nixon, and you're in the White House. You know, like that's such a cool setting, and it's so ridiculous of a premise. I, I just wish there was more because the two maps are expansive as hell. They, these are some of the biggest Zombies maps I've ever seen in the series. But I, I just, I wish there was maybe a little more to go with it. And that is the slightest of criticisms I can give. If there's anything else, it would just be that playing solo is completely worthless this time around. I tried to do, or I found a guide specifically for Liberty Falls, and I was like, hell, I'm going to go through the story by myself. I'll solve this, and, you know, I won't have to sync online matches trying to do all of this shit and forget it when my friend and i were playing that first night we got up to wave 36 on liberty falls and we were kind of stunned we're like we've never done this good in a zombies mode before but by myself i can't even get past wave eight it's just it's so overwhelming and i don't think the game scales the zombies well to a single person so maybe some fix with that, or maybe have it so that you get progressive unlocks. So if I do the first six steps and then die, I don't have to then restart the whole process. I could just continue from where I left off. I know that would maybe nullify the difficulty in figuring out the story mode, but until directed mode comes out, it, it just feels overwhelming. Like the steps I looked up for Liberty Falls the farthest I've gotten is to step 18 of 23, and that's a little ridiculous. <laughs> We're talking I was up to almost wave 40 with a group online, and then we eventually died because what can you do? It just becomes too much. It's neat, though, that you can exfiltrate. So if you're not going for the missions and you just want to get a high score and see how long you could go, but then realize, hell, I need to have dinner or I got to pick my kids up or something, you can now exfiltrate and the mission's not just a total bust. It's not like you just wasted your time and then had to die. But overall, yeah, Zombies is really the star of the show here. And even if the other two modes were complete shit shows or something, which they're not, Zombies would make up for it. It really is the standout element of maybe the entire series at this point. And I do hope that Treyarch can continue to craft these zombies modes for as long as viable. I mean, it's ridiculous that there's been so many of them and it's not a tired old kind of washed up thing. But the ingenuity put into each of these levels is staggering. I mean, I didn't even mention the bowling minigame or that apparently you could become this mascot Aetherella and... I mean, just, there's so much in Zombies, and I still haven't found it all out, and, you know, I really just want to play it some more. <laughs> it's the best thing I could say. So those are my overall thoughts on Black Ops 6's multiplayer and Zombies mode. I lumped these two together because it really does encompass sort of the same ideal, especially since progression is now linked together, which I suppose is a thing that happened since Modern Warfare 2. I'm not exactly sure in the specifics of that, but overall, I do think this year's Call of Duty is perhaps one of the better ones overall. I mean, you know me, I guess I'm a hater of modern AAA games, but if the Call of Duty series is going to continue to provide high quality co-op experiences like in Zombies, then I really can't fault it for much. And as I said in my last review, I'm more content with Call of Duty's existence within the industry now because indie games have risen up to fill in the gaps that are missing. It might take Sony a bazillion friggin' years to make one game, but when you have a bunch of indie experiences that are providing not only nostalgia, but innovation on 2D fronts or within 3D platforming, etc. Something like Call of Duty's fine. I do wish Microsoft had a more diverse portfolio, but if they're going to spend all their money on one property, I suppose you could do worse than Call of Duty. So yeah, if you've enjoyed this review, 
make sure to do all the YouTube spiel, like, like comment, subscribe, whatever, share the video, check out my other ones. You probably won't see many AAA games from me as they're just not my forte. But if you want to find some cool indie games or check out retro shooters and stuff, you know, I'm the go-to guy. So <laughs> thanks for watching, everyone, and I hope you enjoyed the video.